The Cold War space race was a space exploration battle between two global superpowers, spanning from the late 40s to the early 90s. It was an ideological, political, and military battle between the Soviet Union and the United States of America. During this atmosphere, the nations turned both their sights upwards towards the stars. Both global superpowers realized that space held great strategic achievements and great symbolic importance in asserting their dominance as a global superpower. The Soviets pushed the Americans to do better with the launch of Sputnik 1. On the 4th of October of 1957, they really showed that they were, that they were coming into this hard and really put the pressure on the United States. However, just four years later, the Soviets did it again with putting Yuri Gagarin, the first human, in space on April 12th of, of 1961. With this, John F. Kennedy swore to the United States that he would put the first man on the moon, starting the space race, you know, today. The competition between these two superpowers led to many, many new innovations, from the lunar module to the engines on the Saturn IV. The Saturn IV was, sorry, Saturn V was the biggest and baddest piece of machinery you could get at the time. Good afternoon, my name is Jose Hernandez Correa, and today I will be explaining to what extent would another space race be beneficial to the world. The answer to this research question is another space race would be beneficial by producing technological, economic, and political gain. Space exploration has always been one of national prestige. The scientific advancement evident and undeniable, along with profits that come from private contracts such as SpaceX and Blue Origin. With that, the political bonds seen in the International Space Station are evident as well, pr proving that we can work as one, one species. However, it is important to note, notice that this innovation can lead to a lot of environmental concerns. <clears throat> However, with technological advancements, this can all be fixed. In the College of Fat Stimulus inaugural address by Franklin Delano Roosevelt, he explains the need of dedication and courage from the, from the American people. He says the quote, the only thing we need to fear is fear itself. Just as FDR called upon the Americans to summon their courage and resolve, it is important that in the quest to, in a, to become a spacefaring country, everyone is needed. Everybody has a role to play. The spirit of people must stay high and high through and through failure. Because the space race is not just about technological advancements, but about the battle for the hearts of the people and their minds. It is imperative to notice that the space race will bring a lot of things, not just tangible, but intangible as well. The space race will bring together people's minds and hearts through, through, time, through, through trying times, such as the Cold War, where it is critical that people remain united. Technological advances from something as big as rocketry to something as small as computers. With a new space race, we can not only see advancements in up there, but we can also see them down here. During the Cold War space race, the technology needed to take things to the moon would be, need to be smaller, as rockets cannot hold as much as they could. The research and development teams, you know, may have made a lot of advances that you're used to down here, but weren't used to back then. Advances in propulsion systems Material silence and engineering can all be accredited to advances in rocketry. Satellites have been our eyes in the sky for as long as we can remember. Since before many of us were born, providing invaluable data for forecasting, navigation, communications, and observation. NASA.org proves time and time again that a lot of our tech and our computers and smartphones can be accredited to the first to the Apollo missions. From, from cameras to small, techno to small computers for calculations in rocketry. Space exploration has yielded an astronomical amount of progress down here on our, on our home world, Earth. Economics. Money has always been a concern for space race. Rockets are expensive. However, there's a hidden gem on the moon, helium-3. Helium-3 is the next gold rush, a source of energy that can be better than nuclear power. Helium-3 is safer and has zero waste, while also providing a great efficient source of nuclear fission, fusion. I see in this graph right here, the, the demand for, for helium-3 continues to increase as people re realize its benefits. 
the demand has grown exponentially, over 600% in August of 2020. However, the economic potential of the space exploration comes far beyond helium-3. Satellite communications, asteroid mining, <clears throat> technology, sorry, space tourism, and beyond. As technology expands, the global space economy can only grow exponentially from here. Beyond scientific advancements and economic opportunities, the space race has significant geopolitical implications. One of the basic, biggest examples of this is the Apollo Soyuz mission, where, the, where one astronaut, where one American astronaut and one Soviet cosmonaut came together as one in space, shaking hands, showing that we are all still human, even in such trying times of high tensions, such as the Cold War. This symbol of cooperation led to a series of events that can be attributed to saving the world from the high tensions that were in the Cold War. This shows how although we are enemies sometimes in the space race, we can still show that we are still human deep down. This goodwill strengthens international relations and we and could be a good reason we still have the International Space Station today. The collaborative effort not only helps nations stay connected, but helps all of us achieve our main goal of advancing as one species. Overall, the space race holds mad potential for the future of mankind and staggering benefits technologically, economically, and politically. By investing in space exploration, we are not only pushing the boundaries of human knowledge, but creating a brighter future for our kids. So let's, em let's embrace the spirit of exploration and embark on this new age of civilization together as one species. Thank you, and here are my references. All right, a um, couple questions. First up, um, what evidence did you gather that you didn't use and why didn't you use it? There's a lot of evidence I gathered on China and their um, research of how they experienced the um, space race and how they plan to start another one themselves. However, I didn't want to use it because there was no competition in how it pushed everyone to work as one. And we don't really have a lot of insight in how the, the Chinese minds feel. So I couldn't really use a lot of their data. Okay, and what advice would you have for someone that wants to look at this in the future? For someone that wants to look at this, I'd say they, they look at ESA, the European Space Administration, and NASA, the National Aeronautical and Space, Amer and Space Administration, as they provide great and credible sources as they are government, government websites and they're very credible. 